Showtime! Give me Can you really even call it Skullgirls anymore? There's a guy in here now. Apparently Cerebella wasn't heavy enough and folks needed someone to fill the Maxima slash Potemkin slash Tager role. But we'll get to the new cast in just a little while. It's Skullgirls, the moderately exploitative, super hardcore 2D fighter that's had some of the worst luck in the industry. Having to deal with the fickle natures of everyone from Microsoft to Konami just to get their game working on every platform it's supposed to be working on. It's taken a massive amount of work just to make good on the promises made during Lab Zero's Indiegogo campaign, so hopefully everything's worked out and the game's all the better for it, right? Well, actually, that's exactly right. Skullgirls Encore is the ironing out of all the issues that led up to this point, and there were plenty. Now that the Earth's cooled, we can finally enjoy this retooling of Skullgirls with two new characters, new storylines, and, well, a list of patch notes as long as my arm. This being a fighting game, a number of these adjustments are the kind of minuscule tweaks that normal human beings would never notice, but make a huge difference to the frame-counting psychos that form this title's user base. Things such as, quoting, Level 1 supers have been adjusted to have one frame of overlap between Super Flash induced hit stop and active frames. There are a few exceptions. End quote. Most functioning human beings would find a change like this imperceptible. This game is not for those people. So who are these new combatants? One's a svelte opera singer, undead legionnaire, and host to an erudite parasite. The other's called Big Band for obvious reasons. Once a beat cop who got beat up, Big Band was given a new lease on life all Robocop style. But since this is Skullgirls and everything has to conform to the cinematic film noir aesthetic, his biotic bits are all musical instruments. From within that trench coat, he can summon triangles, horns, drums, clarinets, pretty much Lawrence Welk's entire orchestra reel. Hell, he's got a symbol specifically for ridiculous feats of blocking, allowing for some Daigo Umehara tier shenanigans. Squiggly, on the other hand, is a faster and lighter brawler who's on much better terms with her magical passenger Leviathan than, say, Philia and Samson. She plays much more conventionally, but has a complex system of stances and charges that prevent her from being adopted by Johnny Button Mash. I'll admit, in the wake of new Blaze Blue and Persona 4 Arena and the hype leading up to Guilty Gear x my appreciation of Skullgirls fell by the wayside. I knew it was going to be a while until the patches and DLC characters would pass through bureaucratic hell, so I didn't even bother with it. Until now. Now things are in place. You can enjoy the revamped, retooled mechanics and play through the new stories and remember why Skullgirls was great in the first place. Awesome, fluid animation, a deranged sense of humor, 10,000 pop culture references, that crazy combo naming system, an aesthetic that brings back the old-timey fonts and decoration of the infancy of film into 2014, and a soundtrack that would have you snapping your fingers on every downbeat if you weren't locked into a death grip on your arcade stick. Now, with 100% fewer, Konami randomly delisting the game from PSN shenanigans. Boogie. Saxima. Come on. 